Well, you all know who I am. Now, what do I do? That's a question my family asks a lot. Well, I am a member of an elite small group of men called the Tactical Air Command Control Party. I have earned the title of Joint Terminal Attack Controller. You all look confused. Let me try to clear it up for you. I'm also known as a forward air controller, a ground controller, or for old school folks, an enlisted terminal attack controller. Still confused, huh? Yeah, it didn't help much. How many of you all have seen the movie Transformers? Yeah, pretty much everybody in here. Well, the actor Tyrese Gibson portrays a joint terminal attack controller in this movie. I control the airstrikes. I'm the guy on the ground with the ground forces and the ground commanders controlling these airstrikes. You could say simply that I advise and control close air support. Is that all I do? No. No. I am pretty much the joint, the elbow per se, of air to ground. I'm the glue that holds the ground forces to the air power. With my job comes a certain responsibility of timeliness and accuracy. I need to have timely effects, but they need to be accurate. They work together, not alone. Technology over the years has improved my ability to be timely and accurate. Advances haven't always been easy, but we have to take them in stride because what we want is timely and accurate effects. You can almost say my, my job is that of a seeing eye dog. But instead of guiding a blind man, I'm guiding a jet with bombs to a target. We have unmanned aerial assets now that provide not only observation qualities, but lethality to a fight. We have fixed swing assets, airplanes, jets, carrying bombs and munitions that bring a firepower to the fight that, that you can't even explain. And the rotary wing aircraft. We thank the Army and the Marines for these, but they put these in my responsibility too because I'm the air link. This is an image of what an, a pilot might see at 15 to 20,000 feet. If I told you to go to a house in this area, would you be able to automatically say, oh yeah, I see a house in the area? Which one? So what I do as a, a joint terminal attack controller is I guide a plane to a target. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to teach you the art of an aerial perspective. I am on the ground. I'm looking at some buildings, much as you would when you're walking down the street here. I'm talking to an airplane. I need to have his eyes on a target. I have to make my image of the ground an aerial image and get a pilot eyes on. So what I'm gonna do with, with you guys right now is I'm gonna run through an exercise. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get your eyes on something and when you see it, call contact. We're gonna try to move through this really fast so when I hear contact, we're gonna push on. Can you see a north-south running river? Can you see the two bridges on that north-south running river? Focus on the south bridge. The east-west running road on that that bridge connects to, call contact. Follow that road east until you come contact with a sports field on the north side of that road. The length, using the east-west length of that football field, move west one length. Open field, rectangular building to the east of that large open field. That is your target. That is my job, to get the pilot's eyes on target and develop something I like to call warm fuzzy. This warm fuzzy, when things are going on in the battlefield, there's lots of nervous, stressed, scared emotions going on. Bullets are flying. The ground commander wants results now. All these different people are relying on you. The best way I know how to describe this warm fuzzy is taking you back to, to the first date that you've ever been on. 
the first time you went out with someone that you really, really, really liked. Now, for a guy, this is a big deal for us. We have a lot of preparation. We have a lot of stress. The girl, probably, she's nervous too, but the guy, he's, he's really working hard. He's not spending 15 minutes in the bathroom. He's doing it all. He's spending an hour and a half in there. He's clipping his nails. He's putting the hair gel in. He's making sure he's got cologne on. He's nervous. He's stressed. He's got a plan of events. He wants you to like him too. He wants to get to that point where he gets that first kiss. And it's not until that moment where you're going in for that first kiss that you have that confidence now. You know everything is going to be right. Everything that you, you worked on, every little piece of stress, everything worked out great. And it's where it's supposed to be. That's when I talk about a warm fuzzy. Now, how much easier is it for me to get a warm fuzzy when I have an image like this off the pilot? Can anyone call contact on the church? This is an advanced target pod image. This is what our aircraft are carrying now. This makes me getting a warm fuzzy a lot quicker. A lot quicker. So, in regards to the warm fuzzy, this is my aerial perspective. Like I said, I'm the definition of joint. I live two lives. This is just my aerial perspective. I have the perspective from the ground. I'm a ground force. I'm an operator working with the Army. And it's really awkward a lot of times when the Air Force guy shows up in an Army unit. And the best way I can even explain this is taking you back, say it's the middle of a school year and you're a new kid in a school. Not only are you the new kid in the school, but you're a hot shot football player for the rival school. And that year, that school destroyed your school that you're in now. Now you're walking in. You're in a class full of people who don't really like you too much. They're, they're, they're competition. They see you. They don't know what to think of you yet. It's very awkward. Lucky for me, I speak the languages. I can talk Army. I can talk Air Force. It, it's it's pretty good pretty good language to speak. But I also bring toys to the fight. Much like that kid who's got the new Xbox and the Call of Duty game. But the truth of the matter is that I have that little computer when they get their, their little kill streaks and they, they get their precision strike computer screen with the Predators and the fixed wing aircraft. I actually have that computer. Then they want to play. Can we see that? Can we touch it? Can I play next? It's nice to have toys, but when it comes down to it, I'm an operator. I follow in the footsteps of men like Joseph Wren, Patrick Lape, and Robert Zachary. Men who don't do this job for wealth, rank, or honor. And I didn't even know why I was doing this job. I was guaranteed intel when I was coming in. And before I even squirmed out of my job, my mom knew that's not what I was going to do. I was going to do a combat job. And I, I didn't really understand why. And I went to the seminar with Sergeant Zachary, and Lieutenant Colonel Grossman was speaking. And he said one thing that just it clicked in my head. My life for yours. Don't waste it. And don't think of that as giving my life for my country as far as dying. Think of it more as self-sacrifice. I do this job because I can. I have the ability. I'm effective. Not everyone can do it. So those months, those days that I don't spend with my family, you spend it with yours. And don't waste it. I'm an operator. I want to be forward with the, the ground forces on the ground. But the truth of the matter is there are 660 JTACs in the United States Air Force. 660. That no, number might not seem a lot, but that means there's one JTAC for every 1,000 ground forces. That one JTAC is responsible for providing air support to those 1,000 ground forces. 
As much as I would like to be forward, I cannot meet all the missions forward. Because what if I'm out supporting this group of 100 guys and there's 300 over here that need air support right now. And I can't facilitate that to them. Lucky for me, technology has advanced in such a way that I can reach out and touch people from behind. I can see all 1,000 of these troops, no matter where they're at, in their different locations. And if they need me, I can reach out and touch them. I can give them the support that they need from the ground. And a lot of it has to do with the technology we have. We have the ability blue force trackers to, to track our friendly forces, to send data links to aircraft with targeting data. Which, which gets me to the point that my, my grandfather always said in, relationship, in relationships, it's never really the big things, but it's the little things, the small things that make the big picture. And in that, I've had to develop to be a jack of all trades. And that's in regards to a lot of things. For example, my job is not just calling in the airstrikes. I have to be sufficient at things like mi Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint. Because like, like a master chef will prepare a meal, presentation is everything. And I'm an Air Force guy in an Army world. And the Army is not really going to listen to me if I serve them a plate of slop. I can provide them some amazing things, but I have to make the picture a little more accurate. I have to show them numbers of what I can give to them. I have to show them data. They want to see that. Target imagery. Working these systems that produce target imagery, I need to know how to work those. They have developed so much that I can set up a target specific plan and know exactly where we're going to hit and have set targets and already have them to the aircraft before I le even leave the wire, before I even go out. That's, that's huge. That, that brings a more timely and effective result to the battlefield. Again, I'll, I'll bring up Blue Force trackers. It's an Army system that is amazing. My warm fuzzy gets huge. I love that warm fuzzy. I know where all my friendlies are. They're safe. I don't have to worry about them. Internet relay chat. We message now. Your instant messenger, your text message on your phone, we do that. If I need to talk to somebody who's miles away, I just send them a quick message. Say, hey, here's what's going on. Send me what you can. It's an easy thing. It's, it's wonderful. But regardless of the advancements of pods, the, the technology with imagery, computer-based systems, all these things encompassed have made my job more effective to get timely and accurate results to the people who need them most. That's my brothers in arms on the ground. Our hope, as far as, as the Tactical Air Command Control Party, is that people, this technology keeps advancing, and we get a small, lightweight system that holds multiple softwares and is compatible with different pieces of equipment. The reason I say this is because you gotta remember, we have to carry it. If we're rucking through the mountains of Afghanistan, we've already got 80 pounds of gear on our back. We don't need any more. We gotta keep up with the Army. And they, they love to see an Air Force guy fall behind. <laughs> so, as technology keeps advancing, if it keeps going in the right direction and it keeps producing these results that we look for, I'll continue to embrace it. And it's hard. I'm an old school guy. I'm a stubborn type A personality. I learn a way that works and I want to stick to it. But there's always ways to make it work better. As long as it keeps doing that, I'll continue to embrace it. Because it's not about what I want. It's about eliminating the threat to my brothers in arms because the threat wants to eliminate them. And that warm fuzzy I talk about a lot does not compare to that feeling I have, knowing that my brother on my right and on my left is going home safe to their families. Thank you for your time.